Hello and welcome back to the OTB channel. Today I've got a little mini tutorial on Git, which I've personally only been using for the last year or so because I'd always had the impression it was really complicated. But in actual fact, it's the simplest thing in the world to use. So today I'm going to show you a few commands and how I actually use Git so that you can get started with it. See you after the intro. Okay, welcome back. So not a video review to, uh, today, just a mini tutorial. I've had this in mind for a while, um, and I haven't done it because I thought it might be a little bit too short, but today, as you can see, I'm, I'm soaking wet, it's freezing, and I thought a quick video is what's required. So Git, why would you use it? Well, if you have doc files that you're constantly messing with uh, for window managers or for your bash RC or for anything else, the chances are that you want to save them somewhere. You want to back them up so that if you want to do a reinstall or you want to replicate an install on another machine, you can pull them down really easily and reuse them. Now, many people I know advocate you know setting up a, a separate home directory so that you can maintain uh, your dot files it's not something i've ever done when it comes to partitioning disks I, I i just tend to create a root partition and for the last 12 months or so since i've been using git that really hasn't been a problem at all because i can just pull down all of my dot files with a few commands so today i'm going to run through what i do I'm going to keep it simple because Git, you can do all sorts of clever stuff with. Uh, most of the stuff I don't use. Um, so I'm going to run through three or four commands to get yourself set up. And I really can't see why anybody who wants to store dot files wouldn't use the Git system. So without further ado, let's get started. Right, so you should now see on your screen... Um, a web browser opened up at my GitLab repo. Just for the purposes of doing a demo of this, uh, I'm using the Void Linux uh, virtual machine I created a few weeks ago because it doesn't have any Git repos currently on it. So I thought it'd make a, a, a good vehicle for showing you how to do this. So First thing you need to do is you need to open up something like a GitLab account or a GitHub account. And I, I believe you've got other options. Personally, I've ever only ever used GitLab. It's free, or at least you can create a free account. It does everything I need it to do, and I've had no problems with it whatsoever. I've got quite a few uh, repos or projects, as GitLab calls it. Uh, you'll see them down here. I've got seven of them currently. Um, the main one for my Arch system is my dot .files repo, which is to, uh, open to the public. I've also got one for the Slackware Libx FTBGRA, and I've also got the Rofi Edit repo there. There's a few other repos there that have a padlock against them, and they're private you do have the option to make your repos public or private. I tend to keep my repos private until I'm happy with them to release, you know, to, to the general public. If there's still a work in progress, I have a tendency to keep them uh, private initially. Completely up to you what you do. But anyway, once you've created an account... What you would do, the first thing that you would do from this web interface, or it's how I do it anyway, is to create a new project. And you've got this little plus sign up there. And if I click that, it gives me the option to create a new project. And I create a blank project always. It asks you to uh, create a project name. Let's think, what should we call this? Uh, video demo why not and a project description um a repo 
to demo git you can make that as detailed or as simple as you want now initially i'm going to leave this on the private level i do want to initialize it with a readme which means i'll be able to clone this repo onto my computer and i have another option here enable static application security testing i'm not going to be using that to be honest so i'm just going to unclick that and then I'm just going to hit the create a project button. And here we are. Here's my video demo repo. Now, initially, there's nothing in this. The only thing in here is the readme file it's, that it's created. And the readme file is actually pretty simple. It creates some generic text about, you know, what you can and can't do. It gives you some links to various things. Tells you how to edit it. You edit it in markup language. And uh, it is what it is. It's essentially an empty repo at the moment. But I can clone this on, onto my, uh, my PC and I can now start working with it. So let's move on to the next stage. Right, so you've opened uh, your account. You've created your first repo in the GitLab interface uh, in my case, the next thing you want to do is you want to install Git, um, which in Linux is really easy because Git's available in the repos. It might even be def uh, installed by default on yours. In Void, I had to install it, so it's now installed. Uh, let me just see if I can uh, make this a little bit bigger. I'm in the XFCE terminal here, and I'm never sure. Zoom in is control plus plus. Okay, so let's make it a bit bigger. There we go. The next thing I have to do is I have to tell Git who I am before I can do anything. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to type Git config dash dash global user dot name. And what you want to put in here, in speech marks, is your login username of the account that you've just created. So mine is old tech bloke, as you might imagine, and job done. I'm then essentially going to more or less complete, uh, replicate that, but rather than username, it's going to be user.email. And again, in speech marks, I am going to, in this particular section, type in the email that I use with my GitLab account. I'm obviously not going to show you what that is. <laughs> but anyway, we're all sorted. All done now. I'm just going to clear that screen. Next, I'm going to go back to the repo here, which uh, I had minimized, to my video demo repo. And you'll see there's a little button there called clone. I'm going to drop it down. Now you can set up SSH with this, but I generally don't bother. I normally clone with HTTPS and I'm simply going to click on the button to clone the URL of my repo. I'm then going to move back to my terminal and I'm going to type git clone and I'm going to paste in that URL. There you go, video demo git. And it's gonna ask me for my username. Now it's only gonna do this if you set your repo as private. If you set it to public, it won't ask for this unless you push something new up to your repo. But it'll ask you every time if you keep it private. So it's old tech bloke, and it's gonna ask for my password. So, this is the password that I set up with my account. And it has now downloaded the repo. And if I do an LS, you should see there, we have video demo, which I can CD into. And if I do an LS, you'll see that there's nothing there apart from the readme. Nevertheless, if I do ls-la, oops, it helps if you type correctly, 
you will see that there is also a hidden .git file there. So all of the structure of that folder is now set up automatically for me to push additional files up to my online repo. So let's move on to stage three and I'll show you how I do that. So it's now time to start uploading files or directories to my online repo. So just for illustration purposes, to make this easy, you'll see the file, well, I've got two windows of a file manager open up on my desktop. The first one here is open in that video demo repo or video demo folder where you've got your hidden .git directory and you've got your readme file. Over here on the right hand side, uh, you can see my, my home directory. And I'm gonna go into my doc config directory because I perhaps want to add in my Alacrity configuration and my DWM configuration, just for the sake of example. So I'm gonna copy them and I'm gonna copy both of them into my repo. I'm not removing the original files, I'm literally just doing a copy. So my directory now, or the directory on my PC, now has Alacrity and it has DWM. So I now want to upload those files to my online repo, or those folders if you like. And there are only three commands that you're gonna to need to know. The first one is git add, and here, I can simply point to whatever files or directories that I've just uh, uh, copied into the Git repo, or if I want to upload the whole lot, I'll just do a dot, as in add everything that's here. Now that adds all the files that I want to upload to the staging area, ready for committing. And so the next command I'm gonna use is git commit. And whenever I do a git commit, I'm required to put a message here about what I'm actually committing. And in order to do that, I do git commit dash M. I open up speech marks again, and I'm just gonna put first commit. And there it is, it's listing everything that's been committed or is about to be uploaded. So it's created a snapshot now. The last stage after git add and git commit is git push. And I'm just gonna type git push. And it's going to once again, ask me for my username, which I'm gonna type in. And it's also going to ask me for my password, the password that is on my GitLab account. So I'm gonna type that in. And there you go. It's all been uploaded. So let's go back to my GitLab page and let's just do a refresh. And what you can see now is it has uploaded both of those uh, folders, the Alacrity folder, which has got my alacrity.yml uh, fo uh, file in it. And it's also opened up my DWM folder. And there you go, there's my DWM folder. If I was to move to a new computer and I wanted to pull down this repo on that new computer, I would simply do a git clone and it would download it as is. Okay, so all good there. So let's assume I don't actually want to kind of do a mass upload, I just want to upload one file. Well, that's easy as well. Let's uh, go in here and see what we've got that I could upload just for the sake of argument. Let's do the bash RC. So I'm gonna copy my bash RC. I'm gonna paste that in. I'm gonna open up my terminal again. And let's just clean this up. This time I'm going to do a git add and I'm just going to point to bash RC. It's already there. So I'm not gonna do a git add dot and upload everything again. I'm just gonna focus on a single file. Then I'm gonna do a git commit, adding bash RC. 
And there you are. It's created a snapshot. And then I'm going to do a git push. It's going to prompt me once again for my username and also my password. All good. Let's go back to my online page, do a refresh. And there you go. The bash RC file is now there. Now the key to working with Git successfully is ensuring that your local copy of the repo is always in sync with your online version of the repo, which if, if you're only using one computer is pretty straightforward. But if you're using multiple computers or perhaps you're using the online interface to upload files, they can soon get out of sync. And you can get yourselves in all sorts of trouble if you start to push new files and directories to the online repo. If the online repo has stuff in it that your local copy hasn't got. Let me just demonstrate what I mean. And, and this is where... That, that comment I made on, on the thumbnail at the beginning of this video, always pull before you push, is really important. Let's, let's use the online version of uh, Git here to upload a new file. So, which you can do fine. Uh, if I just go to OTB, I've created a little text file called test file. So let me just open that up. Commit message, upload new file. It's already there, so let me just upload it. This is just a test. Test, okay, that's fine. Uh, no problem whatsoever, it's now there. So if I go back to my main repo there, you can see that test file is there. Test file, however, if I look in my standard repo on my PC, is not there. So we're out of sync. Well, the way to get it in sync is to do a git pull. Which will once again ask me for my uh, username and my password. And it will go to the online repo. And you can see there that one file has been downloaded, test file. And if I do an ls, you can see that test file is now there. Test file is simply a text file that creates, <laughs> has the content, this is just a test. Okay, so I'm now in sync. How can I check I'm in sync? There's one more command that I'd like to show, and it's simply, you type git status, and it will tell me whether my local copy is in sync with my remote copy. My branch is up to date nothing to commit. I have a working tree that's clean. So essentially, this is how I use Git. I, I keep it really simple. And I have talked about some pretty basic functions here on Git, but for desktop users, that's essentially what we're going to be using most of the time. There are other commands such as git remove and you can fork a, a particular repository and all sorts of clever stuff. But for the most part, you don't need to worry too much about that if you are a desktop user, just using one or two computers to store your dot files. One of the questions that uh, people often ask is, doesn't having a, a dot .files repo, repo on your local machine mean that you're duplicating everything and you've got double copies? Well, yes, it does if you do it this way. And uh, there are ways that you can avoid having those double copies. One way is to set up something called a git bear repo on your local machine where you don't actually have anything in your git folder you literally have your whole machine as the Git repo. Uh, there are a few more steps to doing that, and I've used that in the past. But to be honest, I just prefer working in, in this way most of the time. If you're really concerned about having uh, multiple copies of files, and on some of my machines I use this, I put the original uh, folders 
into my Git repo. And then in my config directory, rather than having a copy, I would just put a symlink to the folder, the, the Git repo. Um, not the other way around. Don't have symlinks existing in, in your repo folder. Have the symlinks existing in your .config directory or wherever you're, you're pulling the folders from. That, though, is the basics of Git. Um, if you found this useful, great, but let's go and have a chat. Right, so that's Git. Um, the great thing about Git is it doesn't really matter what platform you're on, whether you're on Linux, Mac, or Windows. You can use it with all of those platforms. I haven't got a clue how to use it with Mac or Windows. Uh, if that's what you use, well, you'll have to figure it out. Uh, but I'm sure it's pretty simple because the commands are pretty much what they are. I know you can also get GUI programs to help you use it, but to be honest, it's so simple. I don't, I don't really see the point of that. Um, but it's one of those little utilities that just makes life so much more simple, um, especially if you're a tinkerer. And I know many of the people who watch this channel probably are. So that's it for today, guys. If you enjoyed this video, as normal, please like and subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel, uh, go to patreon.com forward slash old tech bloke, or just go to my webpage and buy me a pint. I would, of course, like to, as usual, thank all of my existing patrons. So that's Robert, Aristoteles, Mike, Ty, Forrest, Patrick, Glenn, Magnus, Darren, Mislav, Chris and James. Cheers, guys. Your support is really appreciated. And let's hope the weather's a little bit better next week. And uh, have a great weekend. Uh, and I'll see you in a week.